Okay, good morning. We today we'll cover two lectures, lectures 33 and 34, uh, picking up from where we left off in lecture 32. In lecture 32, we concluded our discussion on how do we achieve the capacity for or throughput. Uh, basically, there is a, a number which you think of it as capacity and you want to achieve as close to capacity as possible. In other words, we are trying to maximize the throughput of, of our system and achieve as close to capacity as possible. So, we are trying to achieve maximum throughput in a wireless channel which is broadband and again the definitions of these uh, come in the context of the, uh, the dispersion that we come into. So, basically a broadband signal is one which experiences frequency selective fading. That means the multipath components are arriving in such a manner that there is significant amount of intersymbol interference. So, that is what we refer to as frequency selective fading. So, frequency selective fading and because it is a wireless system, it is also time varying. So, that is the context broadband system, frequency selective fading, time varying. So, the two things that uh, we were trying to focus on, one was throughput, you want to maximize the throughput, which means that you must adjust your power, you must adjust your modulation scheme, you must adjust your uh, encoding scheme based on the channel conditions. But unfortunately, if you treat it as a single carrier, one portion of the spectrum has got good SNR, other portion has got not so good SNR, it is very difficult to optimize. So, that is where the notion of splitting the wideband channel into a number of narrow uh, channels becomes uh, uh, um, an attractive feature. And we said that equalization complexity also got solved uh, through the process. So, let me just quickly uh, refresh your memory. This is a channel gain versus frequency. The flag that it is not flat means that you have dispersion, frequency selective fading. In order to achieve capacity in this system, we said you would do the analog of water filling in time, but now you are filling, doing water filling in frequency. That was the observation. Now, since it is a wideband channel and it is time varying, it is not going to be constant at different instants of time. So, if you think of the channel gain on the y axis, frequency on the x axis and then a third axis which uh, represents time. So, if you think of this as the time axis, okay, the third direction. So, time t equal to t naught, t equal to t 1 and you can sort of see I have just taken, I have shown you two slices. The channel uh, conditions are quite different in each of the sub channels. So, what you would do is actually water filling for the channel conditions that are currently occurring. So, that is the water filling over time and frequency. So, that is what achieves the capacity that we are interested in. Then we said that okay, we will now move from uh, the notion of capacity to actually the various multi-rate uh, framework and also the concepts and the notions that, that we have. So, let me just sort of summarize uh, what we have said so far. Okay, so, here is a way to visualize what, what we have uh, indicated. So, if you think of water filling, water filling, there are three flavors of water filling. There is water filling over time. Water filling over time is, is intended or is the right thing to do if you have a frequency flat channel channel conditions. That means you, this is this invariably means that you are working with a narrow band signal or something that is not very wide band. And the reason you are doing uh, a channel, uh, water filling over time is because it is time varying. Okay, so, that is the notion of water filling over time. Then comes water filling over frequency, over frequency. Now, this is intended for uh, channels that are frequency selective. That means, your transmitted bandwidth is much wider than the coherence bandwidth of the signal. So, that means, you are seeing some channel gain variations. However, uh, we can assume that if the, if the channel is not uh, varying in time, time invariant, then all you need to do is uh, water filling over, frequ over uh, frequency. And then the third flavor, which is what we would like is over the time and frequency. Time and frequency and the reason we do that is because we are working in a frequency selective fading environment and it is time varying. 
Okay, so that is the flavor that we are interested in in the context of the uh, wireless sy uh, systems which are high data rate systems so basically which means that you must be working with broadband systems so this would be the double star what we are interested in so the strategy that we have taken is that we will divide into sub channels again these are important for today's lecture so i just thought it will be good to write it down so the bandwidth of the signal that so if each of these has got bandwidth uh, let me write it out so sub channel with bandwidth equal to b okay so this is the sub channel and and we discussed yesterday how to choose these sub channel bandwidths so if there are n sub channels times b that is equal to the bandwidth of the wideband signal wideband signal okay so the choice of n uh, the the bandwidth of the wideband signal is is given to us so you get to choose what and the way you choose is by choosing n so bandwidth divided by n and it is chosen such that you choose n such that the bandwidth b is much smaller than coherence bandwidth and yesterday we defined coherence bandwidth in terms of the dispersiveness of the channel so uh, so basically uh, this would be one reciprocal of 1 by the rms of the delay spread rms delay spread so the amount of dispersiveness okay we may not have defined rms delay spread but think of it as a measure of the dispersion in the channel okay so here is the other side of it the equalizer complexity side of it the equalizer uh, 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 complexity side says if i have a narrow band carrier okay narrow band channel if i have a narrow band channel this basically means that the bandwidth is small that is basically if i reduce the bandwidth the impact will be seen in that the symbol period will increase correct if i reduce the bandwidth that means the baud rate has reduced that means the the symbol duration has increased so this is going to imply that the effect of isi isi intersymbol interference is actually going to be less okay so this is going to reduce so that is the direction in which we have moved to solve the equalization problem so therefore having achieved uh, making this observation we basically have come to the conclusion that if i have a wideband signal this is the the previous line is for each of those sub channels so if i have a wideband signal then we treat it as n narrow band signals narrow band channels sub channels narrow band sub channels okay and therefore the equalization for each of them is uh, not very difficult so in the worst case i i can get by by doing a single tap frequency domain equalizer fde frequency domain equalizer okay so that's the summary uh, summary statement okay so the uh, move now is uh, towards the um, to un understanding of the uh, multi carrier systems which we are going to now say that okay wideband transmission i want to do it so he, we 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 referred a very briefly to the history of multi carrier modulation multi carrier modulation basically took multiple streams it could be from a single source right very often it could be from a single source all you are doing is uh, parallelizing them it could also be data for n minus 1 n users each of these uh, streams correspond to a different user it really does not matter to us from the transmission point of view so you take the information of each sub channel you map it into symbols do a pulse shaping and then you shift it up in frequency and the multi carrier modulation methods uh, typically would uh, place the sub channels such that it's easy to re retrieve them through filtering okay 
so uh, we said that uh, the uh, very very early users of multi carrier modulation were the military but from the context of the commercial use of multi carrier modulation in fact the, uh, the name OFDM itself came much later it was always called multi carrier modulation and it basically went back to 1960s where they were trying to achieve the capacity in a telephone channel then eventually they also did it for the um, for the cable television modem so basically uh, the importance of multi carrier modulation was seen or was appreciated for channels that did not have constant channel gain basically there was variation in channel gain and therefore they wanted to achieve that so in this context the uh, the, the the representation of the multi carrier modulation was either through non overlapping channels this was the traditional view of it so these are the non overlapping as opposed to the scenario where you could have a overlapping situation and an overlapping situation would be where you have some amount of overlap but it is a controlled overlap so that you can still recover the signals uh, in a effective manner okay so this would be a situation where it's a multi carrier system but there is overlap is being permitted as part of the design and eventually you will separate it out in the context of okay so given that uh, this is the, uh, the the flavor of the information that, that we have by the way center frequencies now have shifted so this would be f0 the center frequency now would be f1 so notice that the center frequencies have been modified that is how you get the overlapping the bandwidth remains the same you have uh, uh, changed the center spacing between the channels okay now here comes a, uh, a, a very interesting uh, element that I want you to want you to think about and and respond to. So basically, it is a question: Have we come across any system of multi-carrier multi-carrier with overlapping spectra? Have we studied, or have you come have we come across in the course? Uh, two channel case okay that uh, where you try to split but that was actually a uh, you took a single channel and then you split it into two so uh, however if you think about the what we said about the dft or the idft what were these these were uh, as if you were passing uh, the uh, the signal through a, the dft was passing a signal through a set of filters which was this type right the, the it rectangular window response the second channel had a center frequency where this one had it was a 2 pi over m and then you had this type of a response okay I will just draw one more channel orange okay DFT the interpretation was I take a signal pass it through a filter bank what is the interpretation for the IDFT you take the sub channel if, if the DFT is uh, uh, taking these and splitting into signal the, the IDFT must be combining them right IDFT is a synthesis part okay so interpret for me the IDFT the IDFT is takes parallel streams and combines them into a single stream and what are these filters these are the filters that are doing this so in other words these are effectively playing the role of the multiple carriers so the idft is actually a multi carrier system you can visualize just you could as you could visualize the dft as a filter bank that was splitting channels you can think of the idft as a multi carrier system where the uh, information that's on the blue and the red and the orange actually get combined okay into an uh, into a single signal so actually the uh, uh, multi carrier is act known to us in the OFD in the ODM and do these things maintain orthogonality yes do they overlap yes they also maintain orthogonality 
So, uh, the notion of um, overlapping uh, carriers, maintaining orthogonality and uh, working as a multi-carrier system is actually not new at all, especially if we view this in the context of the multi-rate uh, interpretation that we have come up with. So, okay, so orthogonality is also satisfied. So, what are the, uh, what is the carrier uh, uh, signal? The carrier signal is e power plus j 2 pi over n plus or minus does not matter k times n. Okay. So, n equal to 0, 1, 2, n minus 1. So, that is uh, and you each of these for the different uh, the for the different uh, frequencies e power j 2 pi over n times k and you have 0, 1 to n minus 1. Okay. So, and these are effectively the entries of the W matrix which is an n cross n matrix and we know that uh, these uh, the rows and columns you can think of it you think of it in terms of rows or columns does not matter you get the same interpretation the rows and columns are orthogonal that means you can separate them without uh, uh, interference between the so that is essentially the uh, the property of orthogonality so in other words we never think of uh, uh, the idft as a multi carrier system but in a sense it is a multi carrier system with overlapping carriers and which maintains orthogonality so uh, this is this is our starting point to sort of link the various pieces that we have together uh, in in our uh, portfolio and uh, this is the first of the observation so idft dft are going to play a very important role and which is that, that is why ofdm comes about and what you see in the ofdm uh, modulator and demodulator are the dft and idft in other words it is a well known well proven uh, multi carrier system that is available to us and that we are uh, that we are familiar with